Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Brittany, the head instructor and co-founder of Mordhau Historical Combat in Mesa, Arizona. For this video, I'm going to be talking about the basic hand positions or grips for our German longsword practitioners at home. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Brittany. By popular demand, I'm going to be doing this video on longsword grips or in other words, how we hold our longsword. This is going to be just basic grips, the ones that I teach my students when they first start classes. Um, I'm not gonna go into any crazy ones, um, the kinds that have the reverse grips with the pommel or anything like that. This is just really basic stuff to get you started with longsword on your own at home. This is based on my own personal experience, having taught longsword for many years and also based on our historical sources, of course. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you enjoy. So here I have the Klebowski fader. Um, you can see it's been well-loved. <laughs> it's gotten some use. Normally when people grab a sword for the very first time, you know, the intuitive way to grab it is just like this. Now, it's sort of like how you would hold a hammer. So at my club, we just refer to it as hammer grip. This is where the sword and the wrist are pretty much 90 degrees. This is sort of, like I said, how people go to grab a hammer or anything that they think that they're going to swing with. Now, of course, this poses a bit of a problem when we try to cut. However, it's a useful position in which we can do certain guards. What I was referring to in terms of it being problematic for cutting if my sword is straight up in the air, like so, my hands end up leading first, well before the blade ends up coming anywhere near the actual cutting target. As you can see, even this starting position has my hands being very vulnerable to attack. And as I start to initiate the cut, you can see the hands are coming out well before the blade even becomes threatening to my opponent. Then we have what's called a handshake grip, in which case, instead of it being here, just straight on like a hammer, we're here, like a handshake. We come in for a handshake, which might be kind of foreign to everybody right now since we've been avoiding it for weeks and weeks with this quarantine, but hopefully this is one of the only things that you'll actually be handshaking. So with the handshake grip, I'm actually gripping with the ring finger and my pinky finger, that's where most of the pressure is. Now that's not to say that I'm just like hanging out here, right, and have nothing in my index or my middle finger, but I am controlling a lot of the, the blade here in these back two fingers. That allows me to go from a hammer grip to a handshake grip. From a hammer to a handshake. It's these two fingers that end up sort of casting it out. Now, when I do that, I want to make sure that I'm maintaining a strong wrist position. I don't want to go from a hammer to a handshake. Getting this bend in the wrist is not good at all for a plethora of reasons. But also, I don't know anybody that goes to shake hands like, <laughs> like this. So the handshake is still straight, right from the hand through the wrist and into the forearm. You'll notice that the actual blade itself, once it's in a hammer grip, it's straight up. As it comes into the handshake grip, it starts coming forward. So that makes it optimal for a cut. So when I go to throw my cuts, I end up going into a handshake grip to get the tip moving before my hands. With the handshake grip, you can see I start to throw the point out as I make my cut. We also have something that we call a thumb grip. This is more of a colloquial term within the HEMA community. Um, I don't think it's actually a historical name for this grip. Maybe, uh, if it's out there, let me know. But like I said, as far as I know, this is just what like, we call it. But that's where the thumb ends up coming onto the flat of the blade here. Again, I'm still looking for the strong wrist position but I want to make sure I'm closing this gap right in here. I'm trying to get the meaty part of my hand right on the hilt. Here. 
Now the thumb, even though it's here, right up on the shilt, if there isn't a shilt, it's just you know, still on the flat of the blade, um, that's just where it is. It's an ergonomic thing. It's actually not putting any pressure. I'm not trying to hold the blade or press the blade with my thumb, and I'm not balancing it on my hand. I'm trying to close the hand so that my thumb ends up just being there again for ergonomics. Now, of course, you can practice switching from your hammer grip to your handshake grip into your thumb grip. So you can go from hammer, handshake, thumb grip. However, you'll notice I'm doing this with one hand. And the question is, what happens with our non-dominant hand? So, let me show you. Depending on what you're trying to do, the left hand can be close, or the non-dominant hand can be close to your dominant hand, or it can be really far. So what I mean by that is the grip can be quite wide or quite narrow. Now, depending on what you're trying to do, each way has its pros and cons. If, for example, I'm throwing an overhow and I'm trying to end in Alber, that's much more difficult to do with a wide grip, only because then I have to sacrifice the structure of my left arm. So I'll do it with a narrow grip. With the wide grip, ending in Alber, you can see my left arm is bent, but my right arm is straight. When I change it to a narrow grip, I end up in Alber with nice straight arms. If I want to use the right hand as a fulcrum and cut around and do a multiple, like a multitude of flourish and cuts, then I might want a wider grip to facilitate that. So in which case, the right hand or the dominant hand becomes the fulcrum. The left hand manipulates it to cut around. That becomes much more difficult to do with this. You can still do flourishing cuts both ways, but it's a lot smoother when you have a wider grip as opposed to a more narrow grip. You can see when I shift to this narrow grip, I'm not getting nearly as much momentum and motion the way that I did with the other one. You can also see that I'm making very large bends in my wrists and elbows just to move the sword around. Another thing to keep in mind with your left hand or your non-dominant hand is that the sword can actually move in your hand. The hilt can roll in it, and you don't want to like death grip the sword so that you end up sacrificing those good positions in your wrists. Going from a handshake grip to a thumb grip, I am letting the sword move in my hand, like so. If I death grip it with my left hand, starting here, and I go into my thumb grip, you can see my right hand is okay, but my left hand is all bent then I have to move it again. So again, keep a nice gentle grip. You want to be in control of your sword, but you also want to have just enough of a loose grip for it to move comfortably in your hand to adjust what you're doing without having to like turn it and sacrifice wrist positions. So for beginners, the longsword grips that I usually recommend starting with learning and familiarizing yourself with is the hammer grip, the handshake grip, and the thumb grip. These three grips will allow you to do almost all of the techniques. I say almost because of course there are exceptions to that rule, but the thumb grip allows you to do a lot of false edge cuts like the zverkau or the shilhau, and of course you can do nice krumpaus with it as well. And then of course your handshake grip allows you to get nice cutting mechanics um, and then of course your standard, your hammer grip, which I consider pretty standard because that's how most people just end up grabbing a sword like a hammer, um, has its time and place, but you want to try and be able to utilize that less and rely less on that in your cutting mechanics and start utilizing the handshake grip or the thumb grip a little bit more. So hopefully this will help you practice longsword at home. Thank you again for watching, I really do appreciate it, and if you want more content, check out my Instagram, at saint.leafy. Thanks guys!